Now, working inside of Logic, uh, I like to use audio inputs like a microphone. And earlier you saw in my video, we were actually looking at audio tracks. And once I open that audio track in, wow, in comes this audio, right? So, on our Mac, we have this core audio system. It's audio MIDI setup. And it helps us to use hardware, like audio interface hardware. It's really great because you can get really great devices that can give you really great audio signals. Let's look at that. So right here, I'm going to go to my desktop. I'm going to press Shift-Command-A. I'm going to get up my Applications folder. Scroll to the bottom here. I want to go to Utilities. I select Utilities. And here in Utilities, I can select the Audio MIDI Setup. Let's select this right here. And once we do, you'll see it's right here. Now, if you don't see it, you go here. You go to Show Audio Window. And now we see our audio window. We have built-in microphone, built-in output, which is one and two. You see built-in microphone is one and two as well, right? I can select that, and we can see here we have a master output, which you can see right there. I select here our master input, which is one and two. I move my cursor right here. I get the little arrow right there, and we can see this input output. I can see the level it's coming in and the value and the dB level right here. And I also have another device here. I have an external interface device I have here. And I've just got this one actually recently. I'm gonna plug it in and we're gonna see how it looks. Now, once I plug this device in, you'll notice something's happening here. It recognizes the device. It's a complete Audio 6 from Native Instruments. It's a really great device. I love using it. It's not too expensive. It's got a great sound as well. Let's select that device. I select it, and now we can see here are the channels. I have one and two input, three and four. We have SPDIF, which is left and right input here. And these are inputs, right? I can also have an external clock hooked up here or an internal clock. And I can go to output here for my complete audio six. Let's move our cursor here, pull back, and we can see the channels. We have our master, we have one and two output. We also have the output three and four again, and we have the spin. So the, we have six in, six out, which is really great. And we can see, we can change our format. Now our format is based on our bit depth. So here I can go from 44.1 hertz, like a CD would have, to 48, to 882, to 96K. Now be aware of this. The higher your bit depth is, the bigger the files will be that you're going to store into your system. It's going to take up a lot of hard drive space, so be aware of that too as well. And we can see here it's six channel and it's 24 bit. You see it right there. Go to here and that's 44.1, right? And you can see that there as well too. And we can see our value, of course, and our dB level here. And this is with the complete audio six. Now, if I go back to logic here. Logic has recognized that uh, it's scanned for it. It's recognized that we have an audio device and it has detected the device and the name, of course, is Complete Audio 6. Now, it's important for you to get a really good device that you can work with so you can go input output, whether it's a microphone or a drum machine or a friend may come over with his own device or keyboard that you can use that gets you a quality sound into your system. So now I have Logic open. I want to look at our audio preferences. So I'll go right here to Logic, go to Preferences, we'll look at audio. So here in the audio, I can see the devices. So as you saw earlier, I hooked up my complete audio six to my Apple audio MIDI setup for the core system. It says here, core audio. So Logic recognizes the core audio, connects to it, and then we can see the information right here in preferences. So I have the output, as you can see right here, system settings, and I have the complete, and I also have built in. I also have an input, of course. I can go to microphone, and then I'll say apply right here, in the lower left hand. And once I do, you'll notice these audio tracks appear here. Let me close the preferences window, and you'll see it also here on my channel strip for audio one. As I'm talking, it's actually receiving the audio from the microphone plugged into my system. Go back to preferences. We'll go back to audio, and now 
I'm going to go back here to input, select my complete audio six from Native Instruments. I'll select apply. And now it's gone. It's waiting to receive the audio input from that external hardware audio device, which is my complete audio six. So you got to be aware of that. And sometimes you may have to reset or have a mistake happen or some sort of audio error happens. To reset your system, it's just like that. You want to go back in here, let's say you go to this, you pop it back on, and then say, great, I turn the core audio off and on from enabled, I'll select apply, and then we've reset the device again. So it's important to get a really good audio device. You want to record some great vocals. You want to record good guitar parts, uh, bass parts, maybe a bass player comes in, or you want to sample something. Make sure you have a quality audio device. You can get them from sixty to five thousand dollars. You can pay it for it, but get a quality one. And if you want to know more about it, just check with us. Now, if you're going to do some really good recording, it's important for you to get a really great hardware interface, a great audio interface. Now, here, for example, I want to show you a few. This is a Prosonus Audio. This is a Focusrite. This is a really quality interface. This is the Avid system, which they have which is really good also, which is used for a system called Pro Tools, but your Apple hardware will recognize it through the core audio, through the audio mini setup. It's important because we want to make sure the audio that we're recording in, which is analog, is converted to zeros and ones through our system, which is digital. We want to get the same quality of the sound that we hear. You know, where it's nice warm sound from that bass or a nice warm sound from the singer. We want to make sure it doesn't have this digital artifacts with it pops and clicks, or it sounds too whiny or thin. So it's important to get the right device. There's another Avid system right there. Earlier you just saw a duet from Apogee. Apogee makes great devices. So does Avid. The Personas is pretty good. And also, the Metric Halo is a really great system. These devices can cost between 60 bucks and 5,000. You may want to buy it used sometimes, but make sure you buy a quality device. For example, here the ensemble has multiple inputs. I can use several different microphones to get a great output, but pick the device that works best for your system because it's so important to get the best audio quality possible.